following program does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or policies of the City of Oceanside, its elected officials, KOCT, its board of directors, or staff. Hello and welcome to KOCT's Oceanside High Spectrum. I'm your host, Danny Green. We have a great show for you today. Kicking it off, we have Miss Collis here with us to talk about the state of Oceanside High School. We will ask her some of the more pending questions about the school that everybody wants to know. After that, we will be joined by Oceanside's drama teacher, Ms. Rocco Forte, about the new Performing Arts Center, also known as the PAC. Last but not least, we will be joined by Master Gunnery Sergeant Aguilar, the brand new Marine instructor for the OHS MCJROTC program. Get ready, because Oceanside High Spectrum starts now. She is here to talk about the state of the school. Welcome to the show, Ms. Collins. Thank you, Danny. I'm excited to be sitting here with you today yeah. doing this interview. So you've been a principal at Oceanside for two years and a student. Uh, can you give us some uh, experiences you've had? Yes, um, this is my second year as principal. Like you mentioned, I was a student at Oceanside High School uh, back in 1985 and um, then left uh, to serve in the Air Force. And when I decided to pursue my um, uh, career in teaching, I pictured myself teaching back at Oceanside High School. So I've been back there for 16 years. This is my second year as principal. And it's been an incredible first two years <laughs> at the helm. All right. So I know our school is moving into a new direction with Pathways. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, yeah, so Danny, and you've been a part of this um, mm -hmm. creation of a Career Pathways. So I don't know if many people are aware, but we um, have two Career Pathways, Career Technical Education Pathways, already at Oceanside High School. The first one is our Health Careers Academy that has been around almost as long as I've been a teacher there, about 16 years. And what uh, a Career Pathway does is it, it cohorts a group of students with a group of teachers. Mm -hmm. And as these students move through core and elective courses that all align with the healthcare industry, they have the, they work with the same group of teachers to support them to uh, ensure their success upon graduation and success if they choose in the healthcare industry. So we are working at bringing that concept of career pathways to all students because currently the career pathway, uh, the health careers, only um, has room for about 170 students. And Oceanside High School has about 2,000 students. The right. success rate of that Health Careers Academy is incredible, with 98% success to graduation of all students that enter in 10th grade. So we're looking at bringing those career technical education pathways to all students by incorporating four additional pathways. And can you tell us uh, more about the uh, process about creating the pathways? Like, where does it start with the design team? So I would say uh, a couple months after taking the, the principalship, I had an opportunity to meet and um, collaborate with an organization, a nonprofit called Pivot, Pivot Organization. Pivot is a nonprofit that helps schools go through these redesigns um, a wall, uh, to go to wall to wall pathways. Mm. So we started by first looking at and surveying um, our community, our parents, our students, our staff, as to what they thought we should be doing differently at Oceanside High School. And we then took that information and created what we called a design team. And Danny, you've been uh, an important part of that design team since last year, mm -hmm. because the design team included teachers, students, um, community members, uh, staff from Maricosta, um, and uh, people from our district office to help look at all the data that we are gathering to help um, land on the pathways and implementation next year. Okay, Real quick, I remember that back in December we had the, the fires that were running through California and Oceanside became, well our high school became an evacuation zone. Yes, so this year has been an incredible year and a great opportunity for Oceanside High School to just really highlight the great things that our students and staff do at Oceanside High School, one of which was the um, unfortunate fires that we had in our community. Uh, what happened, I think it was a Thursday afternoon, I got a phone call as soon as I got home that our school was going to become an evacuation site. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So the, one of the first things I did was call upon our health careers, or an academy of justice teachers, and they implemented their, um, their recall roster, basically. Our military people are familiar with the recall roster, mm -hmm. and called in our students. Those students are trained as CERT, so they're able to come in and uh, help us implement and establish our evacuation site. Within two hours, we were taking in hundreds and hundreds of community members and gave them refuge at Oceanside High School. And we continued that for uh, over 48 hours. So that was an opportunity for some people for their first time stepping foot on Oceanside High School and interacting with our staff and students. And they were incredibly impressed. Our students also had an opportunity to work alongside the city of Oceanside and those professionals. And so they are incredibly interested and involved in our public service path pathway that we're implementing. So uh, that was just one of a handful of opportunities we had this year to really um, open, the, open the doors of our home, Oceanside High School, to our community and, dis and to help serve them. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, talking to us today about the state of the school. Uh, stick around because we'll be right back and continuing our discussion with Ms. Collins. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Welcome back to Oceanside High Spectrum. We are here with, the, with Ms. Collis continuing our discussion about the school. So Ms. Collis, what do you think is going to be the most exciting things for students next year? I'm, one of the most exciting things for the staff and students is the implementation of our four career pathways. We will have what we call the public service pathway, and within that pathway we'll have the Health Careers Academy, Academy of Justice, and a Teach to Learn pathway. Those are all already in place. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to add a environmental science and engineering pathway. Then we'll have a global business and entrepreneurship, and our fourth pathway is, I said public service, global <laughs> entre, oh, the arts, digital media, and design. How could I forget? <laughs> Especially with the opening of our new beautiful performing arts center, right. that is really one of the pathways we're most excited for, is to be able to use that amazing learning center. Very cool. A lot of variety there, too. Yes. Yeah. So, um, what, do you, what are we going to do with all the teachers retiring this year? Is there going to be like bigger classes next year, or are we going to get more teachers? We do have several staff at Oceanside High School retiring. Uh, we have 22 total between classified and cer certificated personnel retiring from Oceanside High School. And we're working right now to make sure that we are replacing the teachers and the support staff that we need so that we don't have, um, we don't see a increase in class sizes. Mm -hmm. and it's also an opportunity to make sure we're able to offer the electives that we need that align with our new career pathways. Pretty cool stuff, new teachers. Yes. Um, so the next thing was um, a lot of uh, students have been wondering about like an open campus at lunch. Um, I get that question often uh, <laughs> as the principal and um, you and I discussed it I think at some time mm -hmm. um, in the past couple years and I, I, I shared with you that when I was a student at Oceanside High School we did have an open campus. Uh, we had 45 minutes to lunch uh, and I was able to go off campus and, and head on over to Taco Bell and, and get some lunch. But now instructional minutes are so incredibly important. We've reduced mm -hmm. the number of minutes that students have to eat their lunch and we've also uh, used that time during lunch to incorporate opportunities for students to uh, engage with their teachers, to be part of clubs, sign up for different events, go to the student store, uh, go to the, the book room. So it's really 30 minutes is just really enough time for students to handle some business that needs to be taken care of outside of class time. Uh, and I think it's really in, in the best interest of students to keep them safe at campus during lunchtime. Yeah, I, I remember you said that it would be like a really 
hassle, a big hassle to run back and forth from campus because we had short minutes. Yes. And uh, you mentioned that you didn't want anybody like speeding or anything to get back to school. Absolutely, the safety of our students is first and foremost. And it's unfortunate when we hear um, other schools that have open campus that students um, unfortunately are in accidents, vehicle accidents, rushing back to campus before the lunch bell rings. So we, we try to make sure we have lots of activities at lunch mm. on campus so students don't even have a desire to, to <laughs> go anywhere else. And I would also like to take this as an opportunity to mention that uh, our nutrition services is very different than it was back when I was in school back in the 80s. Uh, I eat the school lunch often and it's very fresh. There's lots of options. There's taco bars, there's um, uh, fresh made pizza, there's fresh fruit and salads. So, and the prices are very reasonable. So it's really most advantageous that we keep our, keep our kids on campus, eating healthy, and continuing to connect with, with staff during lunchtime. The last question that's on everybody's mind is about parking and that dirt lot next to the school. We do need to come together as a community to um, brainstorm and come up with uh, some reasonable options for parking for our students when there's not room on campus. The dirt lot right across from the high school, I, I am asked often, why can't we use that lot for parking? Well, that lot has actually been purchased by an investor um, to be uh, some type of small hotel. Mm -hmm. And um, they're a little slow to get that started, but that, that land is now purchased and belongs to somebody. So I think the next step is to start collaborating with the city and formulating a plan because it's, it's not safe for our students to be parking well off campus, um, especially when they're leaving after school during the winter hours and it's, it's dark at night. So right. I definitely have that on the top of my list of issues to overcome. Right. Well, thank you for coming, Mr. Collis. It's been wonderful having you here. But don't go too far because when we get back, we'll have OHS drama teacher, Ms. Roccaforte. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Hello and welcome back to Oceanside High Spectrum. We are joined here today with Ms. Roccaforte, our OHS drama teacher, discussing, discussing our new Performing Arts Center, also known as the PAC. So Ms. Roccaforte, you've been a teacher at OHS for 18 years, and the idea of a Performing Arts Center has been rolling around for at least 14 years yes. now. Yes. Uh, can you tell us about your experiences with that? Um, well, I know that um, it, there was a proposition that was approved by taxpayers. I sat in on a bunch of meetings about the theater, uh, years ago, at least 14 years ago, mm -hmm. and um, it it seems like it's taken a really long time, but it's <laughs> finally open. We just did our first show in there uh, two weekends ago, and um, we've been so excited to have it. It's awesome. So, yeah. do you uh, do you know anything about like the rooms inside of the uh, performing arts? Yeah. Center? Well, the first time I saw the theater, I was blown away um, because you walk in and it's just this beautiful huge it's enormous um, and uh, so I love the theater the lobby out in front is all glass on the outside it's gorgeous um, we have a recording studio we have a black box where I teach class um, we have a, a room to build sets um, which we have never had before I've mm -hmm. been um, known to paint flats in the grass and now this is obviously making it so we can do a lot of other things um, yeah prop storage we <laughs> now we have what we need so it's exciting. What would you assume it would like? I know you're a drama teacher, and you would be doing dramas and plays in there. But what else would you assume would be happening inside the pack? Well, um, about a month ago, actually, Will Ferrell visited our high school and did a um, pump up the midterm elections, or I'm sorry, glam up the midterm elections. Mm -hmm. And uh, my students worked that show, so it it can be used. The community can use it. Um, I know Leah Ritt, our choir teacher, um, mm -hmm. did a big show choir event in there, a competition, um, band. I mean, I think the sky's the limit. It's a beautiful facility. Right. 
So do you have any ideas for the future, like future productions happening inside of the uh, Performing Arts Center? Yes. Musicals, musicals, musicals. <laughs> um, in my years of teaching, because we always used a theater across town and because transporting sets was always just so you know, painstaking, um, I've tried to keep it more reasonable in terms of what I tackle. And now I can do all those musicals that are swimming around in my head. Um, it's my passion. I love musicals, so. <laughs> but any, any musicals that. in mind? Um, well, the pinnacle, and hopefully it won't take me too long to get to it, will be Les Miserables. I definitely want to do that. I love Hairspray, um, big choreography show, obviously huge show. Um, I like some more obscure plays like The Drowsy Chaperone is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, zany comedies, I love, you know, really over the top fun ensemble comedies, um, but I, I can just, I can do anything in there. Right. So it's going to be I exciting. know we have um, an orchestra pit right in front of the stage. It's yes. like a little oval. Do you have any plans to like, use the band or choir, or oh, maybe yeah. both inside there? Yes, yeah, I definitely, when we get to our pathway program, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to do some scheduling where Mrs. Ritt, the choir teacher, Mr. Reeder, the um, orchestra teacher, and myself, we can work together in a common period, and we'd be able to do the, you know, the musical for the spring semester. So de we definitely have talked about it. Okay. Um, like, do you think like the students would be running the pack basically? Because I know there's like catwalks up there. Would mm -hmm. students be running all the lighting and stuff up there? Or well, do you and think they just and they did for my show that just happened. My assistant director, I threw my back out right bef the week of the show, oh. and my assistant director had to step in and cover for me. I mean, I had adult presence there obviously, but they mm -hmm. weren't directing the show, and so she stepped in. She ran everything. She'd already been trained how to do it. Um, I do, I think our kids can absolutely do it. They, they're already starting to, so. You mentioned that the community can use it. Um, we talked to Ms. Collis about the, the fires and that it could be an evac zone. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like flexible about the pack by, by like uh, something we could do with that? Um, well, I would just, I mean, I would think that I don't know exactly how it would be used, but I'm mm -hmm. very proud of the fact that our school you know, sheltered so many people in the last fires. I was, I live in Bonzel, mm -hmm. so of course I was greatly impacted by that fire. I was right in the bullseye actually. So um, I, I was quite moved with our school's response and yeah. Okay. Happy to have the pack used for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for your insight on the new building. Uh, coming up next, we have Master Gunnery Sergeant Aguilar to talk to us about the OHS MCJROTC. We'll be right back. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Oceanside High Spectrum welcomes you back as we talk to our last guest for today, Master Gunnery Sergeant Aguilar, about the OHS MCJROTC program. Master Guns, thanks for coming here today. And um, Time. Yep. Um, what can you tell us about your experiences as a Marine in the Marine Corps, and specifically more about being a Master Gunnery Sergeant? Gotcha. Well, we're probably going to need about 24 hours because <laughs> I've been here for about 28 years. So uh, definitely a, a lot of experience mm. uh, as a young Marine um, and now as an older Marine. It's a totally different game. You know, you, you start off in the lower level, uh, I travel so many places, so many stories. I can probably write so many books and so, <laughs> so many movies, you know. Um, but uh, they all have been, they all have been uh, pretty memorable, some mm -hmm. good memories. Some not so good, right? Yeah. Uh, some ups and some downs, but uh, I wouldn't change it for anything. Uh, the big difference is once you pick up a little bit of rank like a massive gunny, uh, you're more involved with higher level uh, decisions and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and briefing and things of that nature. And sometimes it doesn't become as fun and when dealing with the younger Marines because mm -hmm. that's where the, a, a lot of the fun is. Uh, the, the physical fitness and, the, mm -hmm. and going patrolling and things of that nature. But uh, it's been an awesome ride for 28 years. 
uh, definitely encourage anybody to uh, give it a shot. You know, definitely not for everybody also, but uh, it is very rewarding. Can't complain. I made, made so many great friends, met so many awesome people, traveled the world. Uh, let me tell you, um, probably about 20 countries I visited, all in the dime of the Uncle Sam. I, I have <laughs> the greatest uncle in the whole world. You know, <laughs> and um, unbelievable stories. Wouldn't change it for anything. I definitely encourage it. So. Real quick, at least for you, when do you think you switch from a young Marine to an older Marine? I don't know uh, <laughs> at what point, you know. Um, but there comes a point, I think, when uh, you start making some greater decisions mm -hmm. and uh, you're a career Marine. Um, after four years, you definitely become like a career Marine. You pick up some ranks. You're kind of like a grown-up Marine, <laughs> so to speak, you know. And you're watching your P's and Q's and and everything that you do uh, matters because uh, uh, people look up to you, you know, uh, the younger Marines. So you got to show leadership by example. Uh, so um, mm -hmm. not quite sure when that happens, but it does happen to all of us at one point. All right. So how are you going to use that experience to translate into the ROTC program? And do you have any goals or anything in specific that you're trying to implement into the ROTC program? Right. So for the last 14 years or so, I've been involved in recruiting duty. So I've been involved with a lot of youth, mm -hmm. 17, 16, 15. I, I kind of like to think that I understand the way their mind works and what they want to get into and, and how they operate and their, their likes and the dislikes, uh, talking to so many of you all. Mm -hmm. you know, um, so I'm bringing that little bit of the knowledge. Um, I'm 47 years old, however, my mindset, I'm still like a young person, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the Twitter, I'm on Facebook and social media, you know. Um, I'm a little bit active. I, I got two teenagers that keep me on my toes, 115 mm -hmm. and 117. So uh, that's the type of approach, you know. Um, kind of like you said, the goals, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not necessarily goals, but uh, I guess maybe it is. I definitely want to grow the program. Right? Growth program. Grow a little bit more, uh, more cadets. So that way we can have choices uh, of how many uh, teams we can man, uh, uh, we can take to, to uh, uh, different uh, events and such, but that's probably one of the main goals is to grow it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So real quick, you're switching roles with our first sergeant and you're becoming the MI as he's retiring. He's been here for 23 years. Um, I recall him telling us that he went in during Vietnam um, stayed, became a first sergeant. As soon as he got out of the Marine Corps, he became uh, a Marine instructor at Oceanside High School. And he's been doing that ever since. And he's had a lot of relationships uh, with students from Oceanside and the students and the staff and the faculty just love first sergeant. Uh, it's pretty, so, some uh, big boots to fill. Uh, you have any comment on that? You're absolutely right. You know, the way you said 23 years the man is a myth. The man is a legend. Okay, there is no way possible to replace first sergeant. I don't, I don't have big enough to, re, to, 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 to go into those shoes. Okay, the man has possessed so much knowledge. You know, I've been, uh, I've been transitioning with him for the last three weeks, and mm -hmm. he's been, he's been going at me at my ear. You know, the form and the this and the procedures and the day-to-day -day activities and and the events that we go. You know, but the, the man has so much knowledge it's, it's, it's impossible to word replace so right. the best that I can do is you know I li listen to him mm -hmm. I keep him on my speed dial because <laughs> I definitely gonna call him you know but I definitely appreciate him introducing me to everybody and showing me the right way because that's what Marines do you know we help each other and like he said no matter what happens give me a call give me a, I'll be there on a Saturday Sunday and that's the type of individual that that I'm not necessarily replacing, right, but that I got to kind of live up to the myth, okay. the man, the legend. Right. Well, thank you for coming here, Master Guns. Oh, it's been great having you here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us here at Oceanside High Spectrum. We will see you next time here on KOCT.